210 nautical miles. Initial at 302, 210 nautical miles. Latest on track 150, 302, 187 nautical miles. Track 150 hosted. Scramble mission 823. Scramble, scramble, scramble. Mission 823 scramble. Initial vector 300. Short profile contact Sagar control channel alpha standby 5. Mission 823, this is Sagar control reading you. Strength 5. Under control 0.35 kilometers, speed 0.8 max. Continue climb 0.45 kilometers, speed on top 0.9 Mach. Roger control. Who else has seen the unclimbed peaks? the rainbow's end, the real reasons why birds sing. Because I fly, I envy no man. For six decades, the Indian Air Force has operated ceaselessly in peace and war in defense of the motherland. Indeed, this arm of the nation remains on constant vigil, churning its radars, flying by day and by night. The boys in blue pushing themselves and their machines constantly to achieve perfection in their own eyes. Courage has always been a virtue, and to forget the self and to die in the service of others is an act with a value of its own. War is not the concern of airmen and soldiers only. Throughout history, civilian life has always been affected by warfare, and today, national security engulfs civilians as well as professional fighting men. For these reasons alone, military history is inseparable from the general historical background of the country, and which, therefore, concerns everybody, both in and out of uniform. This is the story about the men who guard our skies and how they, by their actions, sometimes shape the destiny of our country. It is the story of Indian airmen and certain virtues, loyalty to comrades, courage under stress, and above all, their commitment to the saffron, white, and green roundel which they parade to the heavens above with absolute pride. The magic of flying. Combat aircraft, armed with some of the most sophisticated and potent weapon systems, are the backbone of the Indian Air Force today. Hugging the ground or flying at incredible heights at supersonic speeds, man and machine are honed into a perfect combination to seek and destroy. In the air, it's the pilot's skill sharpened through hours of endless training that must deliver in combat. On the ground, another all-important factor also comes into play. The disciplined dedication of the men behind the wings, creating a team where trust and confidence are much more than just catchwords. Today, 60 years after the somewhat modest beginning, the Indian Air Force is a mature and modern force, equipped with state-of-the-art aircraft which compare with the best available anywhere in the world. While the fly-by-wire Mirage 2000 and the MiG-29 are the advanced interceptors which defend the Indian skies against any threat, the MiG-21 BIS, considered the ultimate variant of the classic tailed Delta fighter design, and the swing-wing MiG-23 MF, equipped with beyond visual range missiles, 
make up the bulk of the Indian Air Force's air superiority fighters. The role of the tactical airstrike aircraft is performed by the MiG-23BN and the MiG-27M, which are optimized for low-level, high-speed missions. The Jaguar strike fighter meets the Indian Air Force's deep penetration strike requirement, while the air transport wing of the Indian Air Force has grown systematically since 1946. And today, the Air Force possesses the largest tactical airlift fleet in Asia, peaking with some 13 freighter, troop and logistical support squadrons, plus a number of communication flights. Day after day, AN-32 and IL-76 aircraft transport stores and troops in support of one of the most dramatic chapters in India's history, Operation Meghdoot. In this continuing saga of fortitude and skill, flying on virtually all days unless hampered by extreme bad weather, Mi-17s, Cheetah helicopters and AN-32s fly sortie after sortie, negotiating some of the world's most difficult passes and valleys, maintaining the vital air bridge to the Himalayan outposts of the Siachen Glacier, also referred to as the Third Pole. Guarding the frontiers in northern Ladakh, the Indian Army around the year mans posts at incredible heights which predominate the Siachen Glacier. More often than not, the only contact possible is by air, and the transport fleet has dramatically proved this capability over the years. Helicopters were to add a new dimension to flying after their induction into the Indian Air Force in the mid-50s. Sikorsky S-55s were followed by the smaller Bell 47s and suddenly the Indian Air Force was flying into regions where conventional fixed-wing aircraft could not go. By 1961, Russian Mi-4 helicopters and French Alouette 3s were flying under Indian colors. In the years since, as some helicopters were phased out of service, Others, like the Mi-8s, Mi-17s and Cheetahs, took their place, continuing to fly into the remotest parts of the country, not only in support of our defense forces, but often to aid civil population as well. Indian Air Force came into being on 8th October 1932, but the first aircraft flight was not formed until 1st April 1933 with six RAF trained officers, 19 Hawaii Sipais and four Westland Wapiti Army Cooperation biplanes. Tandon, you can take that silly sheet off your head. Amarjit Singh, Bupinder Singh, Abhi Awal, H.C. Sarkar. Hello, I'm Basu, a medical student from Dhaka. We're just having fun. Oh, we only wanted to throw him in the sea. Who? It's a tradition, you know, being thrown into the sea. Haven't you heard? They need a man to throw overboard at the equator. It's a tradition. What? 
Don't listen to them. They are just suffering from a touch of the sun. Basu, medical student. The departure of six young men on their way to the RAF Flying College at Cranville in 1930 was the culmination of a struggle towards greater representation of Indian youth in the defense services of the day. A first step, a breakthrough, for around these very men was to form the Indian Air Force as we know it today. Few things in later life could have held a candle to that unbelievable moment of metamorphosis. Addressed now as pilot officers, A flight, number one squadron, Dreeg Road, Karachi, and the date, 1st April, 1933.